Hey everybody, it's Steve Gamash here for Chef Knives to Go with a quick look product review. And uh, what we're looking at this time is a really interesting knife. This is the Shidokamo, uh, Shidogami or White Number no. 2 Guto 210mm knife. And as you can see, this knife is fairly tall for its size. So uh, this knife has uh, multi-layer construction. So the center core cutting edge steel down the middle is Shidogami or White Paper Number no. 2 Reactive High Carbon Steel. He treats around 61, maybe 62 Rockwell on that. And then what it has is a reactive soft iron uh, Damascus or layered cladding on either side of that. And that's got a kind of a etched frosted look to it. Actually, let's just get our beauty shot right off the bat here. You will notice that this does have uh, hand engraved or chiseled kanji, which is really cool. You can feel it when you're moving your finger across there. Very, very nice looking blade. So let's get back to the details on it. So this um, weight and dimensions can vary a little bit from knife to knife, uh, but this particular one is 156 grams or five and a half ounces, so it's pretty light. Edge length is 220, so it does have some length to it, uh, about 8.6 inches, and the overall length is about 14.4 inches. The uh, spine thickness, again, this will vary, but coming out of the handle above the heel, right here, it's about 2.6 millimeter, and then I got about 1.7 halfway down. And this has a little bit of an additional taper, what's called a distal taper. Not a ton, but a little bit. And then when you get into the grind, and the grind is kind of just real smooth here, there's not like a hard line where it starts getting thinner down to the edge but it just gradually thins out and it's very thin at the tip and this thing will go through product very very well i did play around with this one uh, and it's a very good performing knife in fact i think this one's going to stay with me <laughs> if that tells you anything and i don't often do that these days I've got plenty of knives very thin at the edge as well uh, the blade height is 54 0.75 or almost 55 millimeters at the heel and then the handle is a d-shaped technically for right handers although i'm a left hander does not bother me one bit and it's made out of sandalwood and black paca wood ferrule uh, the neck you'll see here is about even with that so you can kind of put your if you got big fingers or smaller fingers it doesn't really matter you can just kind of run up there and it's perfect for a pinch grip from a balancing perspective this is balancing just about right there. So for me, be careful it doesn't slip off here. Touchy. Anyway, for me, that is just about even with my pinch grip. So for most people, it's probably going to be pretty doggone neutral. So it's got a lot of uh, neutral feel, makes it you know feel light and flickable. The uh, blade is fairly stiff towards the back half because of the height and the construction. And it's got a fair amount of stiffness to the front. Stiffer than you'd think it would be. Uh, makes it work really well on the cutting board. Uh, out of the box edge, I'll give it a good 6 out of 10. It was a pretty nice out of the box edge. The grinds are really nice on this when you sight down the knife. Um, it's just well crafted. So you've got, as I mentioned, the hand engraved or chisel kanji. Um, you've got uh, great performance. It's kind of tall if you like that. Uh, the, here's the left or the right side of the blade as you'd be holding it, so there's no markings on that. But just a really pretty knife, and it really goes through product well. Um, the spine edges could be a little bit more rounded, um, and the choil's got a little bit of relief to it. But if you're sensitive to that, you could do a quick run through and kind of clean that up a little bit. Just depends on your personal preference, but definitely usable out of the box. Uh, let's look at the cutting board. This is an all-reactive blade, keep in mind, so uh, it'll start to get pretty reactive at first, including the cladding, till it settles down. Um, onions will start to turn it brown pretty quickly, so if you want something a little more interesting, uh, you could try cutting some uh, cooked meat, like beef or things like that, or raw chicken, or uh, cooked chicken. Sometimes you'll get more of a bluish tone with that. I have even tried mashing up bananas with the side of the knife and letting it sit on the mashed banana. A little bit on each side and that can give you some interesting colors uh, but onions are probably the most boring thing because they'll just turn the sucker brown right off the bat so let's take a look at our cutting board profile 
I really enjoyed using this knife. It's a, a pleasure to work with this. It's got a nice profile. So you can see what happens here is we've got a little bit of flat towards the back. So you got pretty good section there and it kind of just flows into that stop um, and flows really nice into that stop. So you got a good chopping section in the back. You've got a good middle section uh, with some belly there. And the tip is not super high, um, but I can still get pretty good there for rock cutting. So this will really do a lot of techniques well. And again, you've got a little space back there for chopping where it's a little flattish. So very, very versatile profile. Uh, it's just a really nice knife. It's a great knife package. Um, it, for the price, it's a lot of value. Um, really quite a lot of value in my opinion. Having seen a lot of knives, so...